All right, we're back with Patty Chandler. So Patty, tell us a little bit about some other alternatives that people can use to help treat or manage fibromyalgia. Well, as I said, fibromyalgia doesn't necessarily go away on its own. You make yourself, you get your body ready and right by eating the right foods and by doing the Juice Plus. But as I t say in my book, you want to do things that will enable your body to move. You have to move. You have to, I don't say exercise. I don't like the word exercise because people visualize Tai Chi and Tai Bo and jumping and running and leaping and all that. We can't do that. We can build up to walking. <laughs> Sometimes just walking from the front of the house to the back of the house is very, very difficult because we're in a flare and everything hurts. So what I recommend and what I still do is to pace yourself. Find out what your limits are and then add a little bit and add a little bit and add a little bit. I started out walking to the end of my block and back and I would sit down and I hurt and I was exhausted. The next day I walked to the end of the block again. Four days in a row I walked to the end of the block and back. Finally I got back home and I wasn't so exhausted. Then I went around the block. And so it's a little bit added each and every time with the exercise. I also started doing Tai Chi every morning, which is slow, easy stretches to where you're moving very gently. So you're not hurting anything and you can do it at your own pace. You can do what you can do and stop. This is not the kind of uh, condition where you Pain, no pain means no gain. That is not applicable to us. Pain means pain, and that's all there is to it. It just hurts. Don't exercise or don't move until you hurt. If you start hurting, stop right away. That's your limit for today. Tomorrow, do it up to that limit and see if that's still your limit. Maybe you can do a little bit more, maybe not. Maybe you have to back off. Find your limits. Work with your limits. And that's as far as exercise. You can also go to massage therapists, chiropractors, acupuncturists. What they do is they, they work your muscles. Remember, though, before you go, drink a lot of water, and after you come back, drink a lot of water. The massage therapist and the chiropractor are breaking loose toxins that have clamped onto your muscles. That brings a lot of pain. When they break loose those toxins, you want to flush that pain out. You don't want the toxins moving from here to here making pain in a different place. You want to drink a lot of water. Chiropractic, acupuncture, massage therapy, um, Reiki, rolfing, not rolfing. Rolfing is very rough. You have to be ready for that. Um, reflexology. A number of helpful methods and modes aside from just walking. Walking is the cheapest and the easiest and for me that's all I had access to when I first started. Uh, but then I, I found out about acupuncture, I found out about chiropractic and massage. Chiropractic works best for me, personally. Now I have another friend who, who doesn't do chiropractic very well, but she really loves the massage therapy. But there's different kinds of massage. Deep tissue massage is very rough. <laughs> it pushes on the tender points, pushes in on the tender points, and to where some people really can't deal with that, although the ones who do, they suffer through it, and later they feel much better. But when they're pushing on those tender points, it just hurts so bad that it brings tears. Some people think that works great because the next day, the next five days they feel great. But I'm not into that pain first thing. I don't believe that pain is essential. <laughs> so I do the chiropractic which helps and the acupuncture helps a great deal. Um, also acupuncture can help for uh, fibro fog. One of the uh, people in my fibromyalgia support group has been going for two years to an acupuncturist who her one of her main problems with, with fibromyalgia is that she gets very, she calls it flaky, flighty, to where she can't remember things, she loses things, her mind just isn't it's almost like a preliminary to Alzheimer's or something. She's been going to this acupuncturist for two years, and he has found the right combination for her that it relieves it. She goes now once a month, and she, it relieves it for her for the whole period of time. Now, this is, she had to work up to that. He had to find the right spots just for her body that would address that. But for her, that's ideal. For me, it's hip pain and back pain. And he does a whole different set of points for her. 
but each acupuncturist has to find their own thing for the right person. And you have to find the one that works for you. Same thing with a chiropractor. You need to have an understanding with your chiropractor, your massage therapist, your acupuncturist. You need to understand each other. If you don't get that feeling from the person you're working with, look for another. It's like finding a right doctor. You know, the right doctor is going to listen to you, not just say, I know how you feel, I'm going to write you a prescription, goodbye. This is not my idea of a doctor. My idea of a doctor is a doctor who listens to you and says, well, what do we want to work on first? And then you discuss it. How do you want to do it? What do you want to do? Uh, the doctor gives suggestions. You say, okay, I'll try this, that, and the other thing. Now, this to me is finding the right doctor. And it's the same way with finding the right chiropractor or acupuncturist, massage therapist, reflexologist, or whatever.